Hey, how's it going? I'm going to sit here on this monitor. I don't know if I'm framed in or if I'm too close or, or what, but how you doing? Welcome. I'm excited about this episode because I have new drum heads on this little kit that I haven't played in quite a while, actually. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I'm Dan Schinder. If you don't know who I am, I'm Dan Schinder. I'm the founder of Drum Talk TV and the executive producer. Lots of crazy stuff coming up. Um, so sign up for our newsletter. There's a link in the thing there. It's real easy. Just opt in. It's free. I don't, not only do we not spam or send stuff too often, we probably don't send stuff often enough. Um, I've actually had people bail from the list and tell me that you don't send stuff out enough. We'll come back. I promise we'll do more. So and we got a lot going on. So uh, new drum heads. Tell me where you're watching from first. I'm in Globe, Arizona, which is about 100 miles east of Phoenix up in the mountains. And um, I'm originally from Los Angeles. Grew up tearing up the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, playing music and touring around the U.S. and recording and all that fun stuff. But tell me where you're watching from. Everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a drummer to enjoy Drum Talk TV. In fact, there's drummers that don't enjoy Drum Talk TV, so there you go. <laughs> but I got some new heads, um, and I'm excited about it because I don't buy heads that often. And it's not because I'm cheap or we're broke, or it's it's because I don't I don't see a reason to change heads if they still sound great. And there's a brand I won't mention whose heads I had on my big blue kit, which you're used to seeing probably if you follow me, for 14 years and they still sounded great. But I wanted to change and I changed to some other heads they had. And I've had those on the kit for three and a half years and I'm changing those sometime later in the week or so. Um, but for now we're gonna, to this one and the same company. So these heads are Aquarian drum heads. I'm gonna show them up close and I'm gonna show how I tune. I have them finger tightened. I'm gonna first go back there and turn on the show. Well, it's on, I'm just gonna refresh. Sorry for my backside there. Um, I'm gonna refresh so I can see your comments and, and all of that. So bear with me one moment and tell me where you're watching from. Tell me how long you've been following the Drum Talk TV madness. We're, wow, over 10 years old now. We turned 10 years old in January of this year, 2023. And we had our big show May 20th. That's what I was gonna say. We had our big celebration May 20th in uh, Las Vegas. And I think I've played, I haven't played this kit since two months before then. <laughs> And I have only played the Big Blue Kid maybe three times since then, maybe. So I'm a little out of practice, but I'm always out of practice because I don't practice. I play on the show. I have one young student about every other week-ish, and that's it. So here we go. Let's refresh. Let me see who's watching. And I'll bring the camera in close so you can watch how I do this. Um, I'm really excited about this, and I'll talk about what heads I got for this kit. You can kind of see from the description what kind of music I play. I'll play two songs on this kit, maybe a little more, and uh, we'll have some fun. Is that cool? Hope that's cool, there we go. Okay, there's the show. I'm gonna have to mute it. Just waiting for it to refresh here, there we go. Hey, I see some people. Cool, let me mute this. All right, cool. So we've got a Steve Negus, the drummer from Saga, original founding member, interviewed Steve recently, talked about Saga, more importantly, talked about his awesome new solo album. Connect with Steve, get that album. It's a three-piece instrumental um, and I'm in talks with Steve about doing something special in our memberships right? that you'll find out about if you sign up for our newsletter because that's where we release stuff first. And we've got Jim Solo in Corner Brook, Newfoundland, Canada. Wow, two Canadians in a row. What's Steve, you call all your friends and relatives? What's, what's going on here? Steve is watching us from his front porch at Joshua VP, my bro, in 
uh, Belgium in Belgium. He says he he hates the jazz kit. <laughs> I think I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm misreading that. Okay. Cool. So let's get on with it. What I'm going to do first is I have these finger tightened, and I want you to hear them first. Just finger tightened. Why? Why would I do that? What's up with that? Because I think they actually sound really neat. Just finger tightened. You know the thing about new drum heads. I'm always so afraid to mark them up, right? They just look so beautiful and fresh. You'll see, I'll show you in a moment. But here's the snare with the snares off and totally just finger tightened. That sounds like a drum, right? How about this one? That's it. They're, oh, they're, that's funny. Did you see that? 13 inch snare. This is why my wife doesn't let me go to the market alone. I'm sorry. 14 inch snare no that is a 13 inch snare 12 inch tom and a 14 inch floor tom <laughs> i think i farted no that was the drum okay that's just ooh. some killer bottom in there so just finger tightened um, i'm going to bring the camera in and then i'm going to go back and put it there but i want you to see these heads up close you know what's funny? I couldn't find my brushes and I wanted to demonstrate and, and try it out because I haven't yet what these uh, heads sound like. Hopefully I won't drop this thing. This is kind of tricky. Okay. I wanted to see what the heads sound like with brushes and I couldn't find my brushes. I think they're in my office. So there we go. Aquarian Vintage modern vintage they're called let's get up close you got a nice kind of roughish surface kind of hard to focus in there and they're like a yellowish color like a parchment color it's hard to tell with the lighting in here but uh, there you go that's the setup uh just in case you're interested because i know a lot of drummers i could geek out on gear uh some sabian hi-hats that is an old 12 inch zildjian i've had for 40 something years or more that's a Zildjian Earth Ride that weighs a ton. It's real thick, has no grooves. And I've had that since 1979, original owner. Thank you very much. The newest addition to the family, I got this about nine months ago. Looks a little dusty. Um, is a 17 inch, a 17 inch Zildjian Thing Crash. And this China, I also got about a year ago specifically got those for this jazz kit well you can play anything on it you know so okay let me put this back on without falling hopefully one sec put the mic down studio's a mess looks like it rolled down a hill so i'm trying not to show too much of it oh real quick there's a blue kit there it is big blue kit we're replacing all those heads with new other types of aquarian heads uh, stay tuned for that announcement. So let me move this so we can watch what I do. That's funny. I was talking and the mic was way over here. What an idiot. Okay. So I'm moving this. I was showing the blue kit real quick just to give it a little preview. That's probably good, right? You, you won't see my face and that's probably a good thing. Uh, but this is so I can show there's a speaker cabinet in the way. So I'm just going to leave it there so you can see how I tune my personal recommendations. And I know there's all sorts of tuning tools, gadgets, gizmos. Um, there's a drum bot. There's a drum dial. I have two drum dials, the original one and a digital one. I don't use them anymore, quite frankly, because I don't think I need to. However, they're great for checking you can check but you you want to always tune by ear you want to always tune by ear you want to always tune by ear what the other tools are good for is checking to make sure the pressure points are the same they won't tell you how to tune the drum so i'm going to move this mic stand in and let's start with the snare so what I do is always use two tuning keys because if you use one and you're tightening too much on one end, you can bend your rim. It's just smart and it's just in, from a physics standpoint, 
and I know you're astrophysicists like I am, right? So I'm starting points opposite each other, and yes, sometimes you'll have an opposite, or not an opposite, an odd number. My word bot is not working today. An odd number of lugs. So I'm slightly tuning them like a quarter turn. These are finger tight. Maybe a little more if a couple feel a little looser. And I'm not turning the snares on yet. Let's see how that sounds. Well, that sounds pretty good, actually. Now, let's, without the drum dial or anything, let's just check the points and see how much they sound the same. Can you hear that even? They sound exactly the same. There's nothing sharp or flat. I'm going to check comments again in a moment. Let me know if you can hear that okay. I'll move the microphone a little closer. Listen to each point. They sound exactly the same. Oops. I'm just used to doing this after 54 years. So I hope I have a good sound. Uh, let me get drumsticks right here. Now let's hear it with the snares on. Brand new heads, I, I'm just not putting them on. I'm gonna move the mic back a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, buzzing. I'm going to tighten it a little bit, and I personally do not use drum dots, drum gels, tape, or anything like that. Once in a while, I'll put something on the drum. In fact, I'm going to look for something right now that I have in here. I'll just be a moment. So let's do that. Just turning them a little more. And I can crank this way down like Bill Bruford or Stuart Copeland. But I, I want to just kind of test the sounds first. Okay, so. again real quick i see cheers from brazil obrigado thank you rafael thank you for tuning in oh no tze as in uh bad french for the jazz kit finally that's so funny yeah i haven't played this in a while right um am i pronouncing it silky or silk jackman from germany thank you got a drum talk tv partner that lives in um uh, munich munich Cool. Okay. Now let's go up here and I'll move this closer so you can hear. Same thing. Two drum tuning keys. How's the audio, by the way? Is the audio okay? So let's see. Without tightening it, just finger tightened. Okay. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do about half a turn. Half a turn. Half a turn. These two are tighter than the others. They're probably not all going to sound the same. Yeah, that's a little flat. Okay, so I'm going to go by feel first to get them to all feel about the same. These are the tighter ones. I want to see what the resistance is like. About like that. Okay, now I'm going to do a half good half turn on each one. I'm going to tune this for jazz first, which means this tom would be on the high side. And I definitely want it higher than the snare tom sound. <laughs> Actually not. I want it a little lower. That's funny. I don't know why I'm hitting that. It's only finger tightening. I like how that sounds. Let's try just these two. These are my pockets. They don't. All right. Let's move. <laughs> Over 
here. I should have brought down some tea. All right, uh, tuning keys. Who took my hand? Oh, I got him, I got him. I got him. Every, everyone relax. No one move. No one will get hurt. Okay, so these are finger tightened as well. I should check to see if there's an answer for the audio. Audio's good. Okay, cool. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve and Steve. This is super loose, so I'm giving it like a good full turn on each one. This one more. This is hardly finger tightened. Okay. Duh. It's cordless, Dan. <laughs> Sorry, I hope that didn't hurt anyone's ears. There we go. All right, let's see here. Getting them all to feel the same first. Opposites, opposites. Opposites not only attract, they don't bend the rim. <laughs> and I want this low, even though know, for a jazz kit, I like there to be a nice range between the toms. That was a good rim shot. I like that actually. This is probably a little too low. If I were to play some Zeppelin on this kit, which I've actually done. Oh, see, I, I hesitated because I almost did something, but I won't. I'll save that. So let's tune, tune this up a touch. It's too close to the other tom, but it's not far enough away, if that makes sense. All right, let's put it to the test. What do you think so far? Let's play to some music. Cool. Here we go. I'm gonna warm up first a bit. Douglas, hey, good seeing you. Thanks. Um, hopefully you won't have too much crunch on the hi-hat. Do you? If I... Is the mic in an okay place? Move that baby closer. Okay. Uh, I'm going to wait and see. So I'm waiting for the, uh, you know what, I'm not going to wait. There's, there's a delay and I'm not going to make you guys wait. So let's pull back. I'm pulling the camera back and I'm going to play to some Steely Dan. I've got a couple tracks picked out. This is a live bootleg from I'm not sure when, but I do know that it's Dennis Chambers. Some new guy on the scene you may have heard of around here and there. <laughs> Dennis Chambers on drums. And I'm going to play two songs that I really enjoyed playing. There we go. Move this back. And uh, I think that works. <laughs> hey. All right. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for taking time. Working on getting back in the groove of playing again, no pun intended. Um, so I just, I just have not been making time to play. Everything going on with Drum Talk TV, the membership site, and 
so much work, but it's going to be awesome. Oh, and all the content from our 10-year celebration. We have so much stuff coming out from that. We've had a couple things come out. Moby Dick and the Wonton Song. And uh, the song remains the same is coming. And I think the next one after that will be Nobody's Fault But Mine uh, with my old band from the 70s. Okay. So let me refresh here real quick. And then I'm going to switch to the other window where the music is. Thanks for being so patient. Hopefully I've got a good volume level for myself to follow and not something too ridiculously loud. All right, here we go. I want to go where I can see the comments. Bear with me. It's a delay. Sorry. Someone that knows what the, they're doing will be right with you, I promise. Okay, there we go. Ah, that's right, Stephen. I do want to do a show about that. Oh, and in fact, Steve, well, I'll talk to you offline about my son, Stephen Schindler, producer. Um, I, there's a video of Barrymore Barlow I want to post, but I'll, I want to draft some text for that because that's a very special album for me. So, yeah, here we go. Okay. Hey, Camp Barnes, what's happening? All right. Mute myself here on the video so I can switch and play the two songs I was looking for. All right. Here we go. Is still on. You're all still on. So Steve, 
uh, is going to tell you about some stuff coming up on a show that we do called Yes Shift. Uh, we've got some really great guests that we've been connected with again to come on. Steve, I think you know who I mean. He's on the cover of an album called Seconds Out. And um, Steve will tell you about that stuff in the chat, as well as put in a link to the sign up in case you didn't see it in the post. So I'm gonna run upstairs to my office and grab the power to my laptop. Be right back. And I'm back. Just give me one sec. Hopefully Stephen Schinder's keeping everybody entertained and informed. There we go. All right. So I'll fire this back up. Is it a buzz? That's nice. Oh, wow. Okay. It's coming. Cool. So, uh, Passion Play. Let's talk about that while I'm here. Passion Play is not only my favorite Jethro Tull album, but um, it's 50 years old this week, last week, this month, July. 50 years old. And um, I, when I cook, I cook a lot. I cook most of our meals. My wife is such a good cook that I don't let her cook. <laughs> so, when she does cook, it's amazing. But I love to cook. I had a cooking show on TV years ago, and I always put on music. Passion play is probably what I play more often than anything when I'm cooking. I don't know what the deal is with that. But if you're not familiar with that album or that iteration of the band, it's worth checking out. And it's only the second album that uh, Barrymore Barlow, the drummer at the time, and do pretty much what people consider classic Jethro Tull, uh, this is only a second album, and the whole album is one story and one song. There's, it's amazing. The production we're considering what it was is amazing, and uh, everybody's just so on point. I absolutely love that. So we'll be doing something special for that sometime soon, and let's pick the show back where we were, if that's okay with everybody. Let me see comment play already was <laughs> all right let's see if I can jump right back in where that was how's that yeah 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 let's see
and some totally different music uh, with this. So if you're just joining us, you don't know what's going on, uh, me neither. Just kidding. <laughs> sort of. Uh, I put brand new heads on the kit. These are modern vintage mediums by Aquarian. Modern vintage mediums. <laughs> four, six, eight drums, and um, they give me like three or four snare heads to try, one of them being another vintage, but I'm not going to do that. There's two others, I'm not sure what I'm going to start with, but I have a hammered brass snare on that kit, so that'll be fun, but I'm going to play another, let's go through this tuning again, see if they need to be put back in tune, being that they're brand new heads. sound totally different to me, I'm sure, than they do to you through this one wireless mic. Um, they sound very warm, and they do sound vintage. Um, you can hear the codedness, if that's a word. <laughs> the, coded, the codedness of the heads is cool. So let's play, this is one of my favorite, favorite Steely Dan songs to play. I probably won't remember it, which is part of the fun. See, I do this to inspire other people to not be so hung up on their playing, you just send us in videos. We curate videos from our fans from over a hundred countries. That's just one of the many things we do. Be part of that. We do documentaries, we cover events, we have four original series with two new ones coming out that are game shows. Um, we do, oh, we do interviews. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, send in your videos. Uh, go to jumptalktv.com, not now. Wait till afterwards, jumptalktv.com is in the upper right video submissions, uh, and, and photos if you want. Give us a tour of your kit even. If you don't want to play, give us a tour of your kit. It doesn't have to be a 17-piece kit. It could be a marching drum, a practice pad. What's your practice setup? It could be a four-piece, it could be whatever. So there you go, uh, Kid Charlemagne. Let's try that.
go sing. Yeah, so I'm playing from a bootleg, and I do my best to find the best quality bootlegs. The reason I'm not playing to the original recording is because it'll get muted. <laughs> so uh, let's go back to the comments, and let's find something that would maybe be a different test, something either a little more jazzy, a little more rocky, maybe, and really kind of put these heads to a versatility test. Even though that's not why I got them for this kit, but that's okay. And I'm going to check out comments. Got to get closer. Let's see. Um, ah, thank you so much, Douglas Reed. I appreciate that. Um, well, we don't have the guests mentioned, but we've had them on before. So, okay, Steve likes to play it really safe, so we'll wait. Uh, but we do have a couple other interviews coming up. Uh, and we just, yeah, so Steve, you can mention those in the comments if you want, the ones we do have both. Uh, Douglas Tussle says, remember the Saturday afternoon sipping rum and cook and listening to Steely Dan cranked up. Very cool. Joshua says, I think in general these heads are an excellent addition to these thinner types of drums or in general starter drums, much like the excellent Remo pinstripes. Very cool. The Remo pinstripes are, I'll come clean are the heads that I had on my big blue kit, even bigger than you've seen it set up here, the bigger version of the big blue kit, for 14 years, the same effing heads for 14 years, and they still sounded fine, that's why I didn't change them. Um, so yeah, you never know. I'm really digging these though. So let's do, um, well, okay, I have to do this. I really wanna just try this beat with these heads and just see what it sounds and feels like. You'll all know this, probably, maybe, sort of, kind of, I don't know. something for you. I'll, I'm open to suggestions. I'll play like two more songs. Let's let's try something really interesting with these heads. Uh, I'm gonna find it here first real quick. Um, so yeah, we have um, some dates out to some people for Drum Talk TV interviews. We're waiting to hear back on those. We're starting the beta testing of the, the membership site, which is uh, going to include uh, education, it's going to include live stream concerts, it's going to include live stream clinics, all in a virtual metaverse, really neat setup, roundtable Q&As with a lot of your favorite artists and not just drummers, uh, so we're working on that, really fun stuff. Um, let's see here. Looking for a good, uh, good bootleg version of what I'm looking for here. A lot of you will know this song too. Spoken too soon. Can a device smaller than a lunchbox really last hold on, hold on. Sorry for the dead air. I'm trying to fill it. Oh, come on. All right, please. I hope this is time stamped. And it's not. Okay. Hang in there, hang in there.
Hah. I'm surprised I'm having such a hard time finding this. This might be it. This might do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to do something else. I don't want to keep everybody. Oh, here we go. It's not on this. This is too old. Unbelievable. Okay, I'll take suggestions. What a dumbass. I cannot find what I'm looking for. Okay, Douglas is the first to chime in. I can do that. Let me find the sound check version of um, of when they played with Jason, because there's no live bootleg of that song. Not of great quality anyway. So that, that's a good one. That's got some good dynamics and stuff like that, right? Be, be a nice rocker to test these out on on this little kit. 20 inch bass drum, 13 inch snare, 14 inch floor tom. Okay. Um, oh, I should put O2 Arena. So, what I'm going to play. Is from the O2 Arena sound check. Um, no, it's not. It's from the rehearsal. Sorry, from like the week before. Or Almost there, almost there, everyone just be patient. Anyone see Zeppelin live, ever? comments after I cue this up. Thanks for being patient, folks. Okay, that's it. That's the rehearsal for the O2 show they did with Jason Baum. Let me go back to comments. Um, so yeah, let me know if you saw Zap. I did, actually. That was my first concert. Changed my life. It was my, what most people a little older than me, was their Ed Sullivan moment with the beat for me it was seeing Led Zeppelin. I went from wanting to be an oceanographer, the next Jacques Cousteau, to being a professional drummer. So there you go. All right. Thanks, Douglas, for the suggestionism. Here we go. I'm going to take my glasses off for this one. After I adjust the audio.
happened during a gig. And guess what, the rest of the band members, you're gonna follow along if the drummer screws up. <laughs> cool, fun stuff, nice suggestion. We got certainly got to try out that head. These are nice. Hey, let's see what these sound like by hand. Bum, bum, ba -dum. How long ago? A minute ago. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, real quick jazz thing, maybe real quick. Maybe. Let's see if I can just pull some up real, real super quickly, okay? Real quick, hold on. Someone will be right with you. Whoa, what the hell happened? Thanks for hanging out.
very possibly on this kit before we do the new drum head thingy on that kit, which before we go, I'll show you that kit real quickly. And uh, there's an 810, uh, 13, 14, 16, 18 inch toms, 27 and 29 inch timpani, 14 inch by six and a half hammered brass snare, and a 24 inch bass drum. And this is what we're gonna put heads on next. Let me just spin this around real quickly for you. Gotta loosen this thing on my bobble. There you go. This is what we're putting the heads on uh, over the next couple days. Not over the next couple days, in about a week. About a week. Next week or towards the end of this week. So again, thank you so much for taking time to hang out with me and listen to the new heads. Thank you, Stephen, for your help as always, and follow Drum Talk TV on whatever your favorite channel is, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Vimeo, and please sign up for the newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. We're also going to be making announcements for VJs. Yes, we're going to get some VJs added to the team soon, and uh, I can't wait for the membership site to come out. It's going to have some awesome, awesome stuff in it. So, Sign up for the newsletter so you get that info there first and you can sign up to be part of our focus group as well. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Peace outage.